Hey there. In this video, we are going to look at solving absolute value equations algebraically. We're going to do this by considering different cases that come up when you have equations that involve absolute value expressions. All right, looking at solving absolute value equations, an absolute value equation is an equation that contains a variable in an absolute value expression. For example, absolute value of x minus 1 equals 3. Variable inside an absolute value expression. Now our strategy for solving equations like that is going to be that we're going to eliminate the absolute value expression by considering separate cases. And we're going to see what that means in a minute. The other thing that we need to think about here is the idea of extraneous solutions. An extraneous solution is a solution that emerges during the process of solving but isn't a valid solution to the original equation and has to be rejected because of that. All right, so let's start here by looking at a few of these like that one that I started with is right here. If we have this equation that says absolute value of that, absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to 3. Absolute value of that thing that I've highlighted in yellow is 3 means that that thing that I've highlighted in yellow could be one of two things. If its absolute value is 3, then either that thing is 3 or that thing is negative 3, right? Because if you're taking its absolute value and you get 3, it could be either of these things, 3 or negative 3. So this is what I mean by considering separate cases. To eliminate the absolute value brackets, you're going to split this into the two possible cases that come up here. Either x minus 1 is 3 or x minus 1 is negative 3. So you're going to split it into that and that, the two separate cases, the one where the thing, the, the yellow highlighted thing is positive 3, the one where it's negative 3. Once you do that, you can just solve each one separately. If x minus 1 is 3, and you add 1 to both sides, you get that x is 4. Or if you have that x minus 1 is minus 3, and you add 1 to both sides, you get x is minus 2. So you've got those two solutions. What's going to be important to do here is to check your solutions uh, for several reasons, just to kind of get a sense of whether you've got it right, but also, more importantly, to know whether you have some extraneous solutions or not. Uh, you can just do this mentally if you want, or you can actually write it down here. Uh, you're checking it in the original equation, not these ones that you separated, the original equation. So I'm just going to write down the original equation, x minus 1 equals 3. If I'm going to check my solution for that, uh, I'm subbing in the values there one at a time. If I put a 4 here, I've got absolute value of 4 minus 1, so absolute value of 3. This is absolute value of 3, which is 3. Absolute value of 3 is 3. 3 is 3. That works. If I put the other value in there, I'm going to get, if I put this negative 2 in there, absolute value of negative 2 minus 1, absolute value of negative 3 is also 3. So that one works as well. So both of these work. Those are both valid solutions to that original equation. All right. Let's look at the second one here. This one's slightly different because it says absolute value of 2x plus 1, absolute value of that expression equals negative 3 here. Now, before you go very far with this, you might want to just look and think about this here, that it says absolute value of something equals negative 3. Absolute value of something equals negative. Then you're not going to have any valid solutions to that. There's not any possible number you can put in here. You can't have the absolute value of something equal a negative. So this actually has, before we do anything, there's no solution to this. There's going to be no solutions to this. 
right? That thing has no solutions. There's no way you can have, have absolute value that gives you a negative. All right, let's try a few more. So we're gonna use the same approach here. We're gonna take that and say that either that x squared minus two x minus nine is equal to six, or it's equal to negative six. And we're gonna solve each of those separately here. Each of those is a quadratic, and we're gonna to have to solve it as a quadratic. We're not gonna be able to isolate x directly. We're going to do the simplest thing here, which is to move all the terms to one side, move that six over to that side, and then we're gonna try factoring it. This does factor. Otherwise, we'd have to resort to quadratic formula. Uh, we are gonna have here plus three minus five. So you get x is negative three or positive five on this side. And we'll try this part over here. If you move that negative six over, it becomes positive six and you end up with x squared minus two x minus three equals zero. That factors as well. So we don't need the quadratic formula here. That is plus one and minus three of the factors, which means you have negative one and three. So we actually have four solutions to that. There's four solutions to that, but we still need to check to make sure that they all work in that original equation, this original equation. So I'm gonna put it down below here. If we're writing that original equation here to check this, absolute value of x squared minus two, x minus nine equals six. If we put values in there and check to see that it works, we'll start with negative three here. If I put a negative three there and I put a negative three here, just confirm that it works. We have absolute value of nine plus six minus nine equals six. Nine plus six minus nine is actually six. So we have absolute value of six is six. This is true, six is six. If you go through and put the other three in there, the other three solutions, you'll see that it works as well. I'm gonna do that in super fast motion here so that we don't spend lots of time doing that. So they all work, all four of these work, so those are your solutions. Maybe even if you wanna put it in order, negative three, negative one, three, five, four valid solutions to that. All right, let's try another one here. Okay, here we have absolute value of this expression equals another expression over here. So that's different than the ones we've been we've done so far where there was a number, a numerical value over here. We can take the same approach, split it into the different cases. If absolute value of that equals this, either that thing, 3x minus 6, equals this the way it is, x plus 2, or 3x minus 6 equals the opposite of that. It's either plus or minus that. Just like before, the previous one we had it was equal to plus or minus 6. Here it's equal to plus or minus x plus 2. Here we just put positive x plus 2, and here we have negative x plus 2. You make it the opposite sign. Now you can solve each of those the way you've solved any equation before that looks like that. You have the variable on both sides, but gather it all into one side. So I would say, let's move that x over there. If you take an x away from both sides, you have two x minus six equals two. Or in other words, you have two x equals eight, and you have x equals four. If we solve the other side here, similar way, I'm first of all gonna 
clear this bracket by expanding that negative and leaving this side the same. If I go about solving that, if I add x to both sides, I'm going to have 4x minus 6 equals negative 2. If I now move that that way, 4x equals 4, add 6 to both sides, so x is 1. So I have two solutions there that I can check. I will check them really quickly here. Remember, start with that original equation. Absolute value 3x minus 6 equals x plus 2. I just know that I need to put the variable there and there. So both work there as well, right? So we have two solutions there, x equals one or four. All right, let's try another one here. We haven't had any solutions we need to reject. We haven't had any extraneous solutions yet, but I feel like we're gonna have some coming up here pretty quick. All right, so take our same approach here. We have absolute value expression equals this linear expression over here. So we'll split it into our two cases. Either x minus 4 is equal to 2x minus 5 the way it is, or the other option is x minus 4 is equal to the opposite, minus 2x minus 5. Solve each one of those. I'm going to move this x this way this time. If I take away an x from both sides, I have x minus 5 and a negative 4 over here. If I move this 5 this way now, add 5 to both sides, I get x equals 1. Try this other one here. First expand that negative sign. This is going to be plus 5 on the end. If I am going to solve that, I'm actually going to move this this way to keep it negative. If I add 2x to both sides, I get 3x over here, minus 4 equals 5. If I then add 4 to both sides or move that over, 3x equals 9, and if I divide that, I get x equals 3. So I have two solutions that are potential here that I can check. But before I decide that I'm done here, I need to verify that they work. So we're going to start with our original equation right up here. Absolute value, x minus 4 equals 2x minus 5. And I want to be able to sub my values in there. We'll do it very fast again here. This one happens to be wrong here. You, you can't have absolute value of negative 3, which is 3, that is not equal to this. These are not equal. Those things are not equal. So this is a solution you need to reject here. You need to reject that solution. Let's check the other one. That one does work. So here you only have one solution. This is your only solution. That one gets rejected. That one is an extraneous solution. All right, let's try another one here. This one looks fairly involved, but we're going to solve it using the same approach here of splitting it into two cases. Either x plus 1 equals x squared minus 2x minus 3 the way it is, or x plus 1 equals the opposite of this, which is minus x squared minus 2x minus 3. Or if you want to write it right away, expanding that minus sign, minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. 
solve each of those you'll come up with solutions potential solutions here these are quadratics so we need to gather all the terms on one side so if I do that here I have x squared minus 3x if I take x away from both sides minus 4 equals 0 for that one I'll do the same on the other side here I'm going to choose to move this this way because it's a lot easier to get the x squared term to be positive so if I move that x squared term to this side I have x squared if I move this over to that side I have minus x and if I move the 3 over I'm going to have minus 2 equals 0. Those are my two quadratics to solve. They both factor. This first one here I'm going to have plus 1 minus 4 equals 0 which means that x could be negative 1 or 4 and the other side here this factors as well and this the two factors here are plus 1 minus 2 which means the values are negative 1 or 2 now looks like we have four values but we actually have one that has come up more than once here so we actually have three values we're gonna check and we'll do that right now again as fast as we can save some time here in the video check in our original equation That one works, so negative one is good. This is not true. Three definitely does not equal negative three. So this one, two, we have to reject that. And we'll try the last one. This one works. So we have two that work. We have negative one and four. And then of course, this two that we had to throw away before. So we have two solutions here. X is negative one or four. One extraneous solution there. All right, let's try one last equation that is a bit different here. Last thing we should talk about here is what if you have an equation where the absolute value expression isn't already isolated by itself the way we have in the equations that we've done already. If you have a situation like this where it's not isolated all by itself on one side and you can split it right away into two cases, you want to isolate it first. So just treat this like a variable all by itself. You have 2 times that plus 3 equals 7. So you can isolate that yellow highlighted expression. I would subtract 3 from both sides first, in which case you're going to have 2 times that expression equals 4. And then if you divide both sides by 2, you're going to have that equals 2. All right? If 2 of these is 4, then one of them is 2. At that point, now that you've isolated that absolute value expression, that's when you can split it into your two cases. Split into two cases once you've got an absolute value expression all by itself. So that means that x minus 1 is 2 or x minus 1 is negative 2, which is going to lead you to the solution that x is 3 or x is negative 1. Two potential solutions there. Both of those do end up working if you check. I won't spend time doing that right now. I'll leave that for you to try yourself. All right. So that is several examples of solving absolute value equations algebraically.